Hi, I'm John Pellerin, the Camp Director at Camp Cross, and we are so pleased and honored to be able to bring online worship this Sunday and the four Sundays in July right here from Camp Cross and the beautiful St. Francis Chapel. Welcome. We're so glad to have you with us. As you know, we can't have campers gather out here this summer, but we do have a dedicated staff. We're here to love our camp. We're here to take care of each other. And we're here to share with our whole wider camp community in many ways. And one of the ways we're going to do that is offer worship on Sundays. So, it is so we are so pleased to be here with you today in this beautiful place. May God bless you in all that you do, and it is so wonderful to be with you. I want to say we have an incredible staff out here working hard, and they are so creative. And so you are going to get the joy and the pleasure of all their many creative ways of worshiping and sharing God's love with you this summer. This is just one way we will be doing that. I'd like to introduce to you our seminarian who will be with us all summer, Logan Lovelace from Virginia Theological Seminary in Alexandria, Virginia. We are so blessed and pleased to have him with us and he will be leading our services today. May God bless you in all that you do and just know that our thoughts and prayers are with you from Camp Cross wherever you are. God bless. service will begin on page 78 of the Book of Common Prayer. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins, through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. The earth is the Lord, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. Now let us say the Venite on page 82. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with songs. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. 
Psalm 13. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long shall I have perplexity in my mind and grief in my heart day by day? How long shall my enemy triumph over me? Look upon me and answer me, O Lord my God. Give light to my eyes, lest I sleep in death. Lest my enemy say, I have prevailed over him, and my foes rejoice that I have fallen. But I have put my trust to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Genesis. After these things, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. He said, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I shall show you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him, and his son Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering, and set out and went to the place in the distance that God had shown him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place far away. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey, the boy and I will go over there. We will worship, and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and the knife. So the two of them walked on together. Isaac said to his father Abraham, Father, and he said, Here I am, my son. He said, The fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together. When they came to the place that God had shown him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham! And he said, Here I am. He said, Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place the Lord will provide, as it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us say together Canticle 16, the Song of Zechariah, found on page 92 of the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has, he has come, come to his people and set, set them free. He, he has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham 
to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins, in the tender compassion of our God, the dawn of the high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our community into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Romans. Therefore, do not let sin exercise dominion in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. No longer present your members to sin as instruments of wickedness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and present your members to God as instruments of righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law but under grace. What then? Should we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that you, having once been slaves of sin, have become obedient from the heart to the form of teaching in which you were entrusted. And then you, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I'm speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to greater and greater iniquity, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. So what advantage did you then get from the things which you now are ashamed. The end of those things is death. But now that you have been freed from sin and enslaved to God, the advantage of getting of get the advantage you get is sanctification. The end is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us say now Canticle twenty one, found on page ninety five. You are God, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the eternal Father, all creation worships you. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you came in hand to set us free, you did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand, glory. We believe that you will come to be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people. Reading from Matthew. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. As Father John introduced me earlier, 
My name is Logan. I am happy to serve as the seminarian for the Camp Cross staff this summer. Thank you for tuning in and joining us for our service today. I am thankful for the way technology allows us to stay safely connected during this strange time. I don't think I am telling you anything you don't already know in saying that the pandemic has been challenging and caused us to think about the way we worship together. It seems daily we are learning new information about the virus and how we can keep one another safe. As we learn new facts, we can rationally adjust and move beyond our initial gut reactions and previous conclusions that we held. Our thought processes move us forward in how we live together as a society. Such reasoning should also help to move us forward in our understanding of our faith as well. So what does this and being together in the way of love mean for us during this time? This is the Camp Cross theme this summer after all. Our gospel reading touches on the idea of welcome and hospitality. But in a world changing so much around us and our inability to physically come together because of the need to physically distance ourselves, how are we to imagine this welcome and make sense of this aspect of our faith? We are always living in a time where God can reveal things to us about ourselves and about God. But in order to understand what God is revealing to us, we may need to pause, listen, and turn ourselves and our priorities to God. Abraham is a great example of such listening and changing his thought processes to better understand God's love for us. This lesson from the Old Testament may seem a bit odd to us today, cruel even. However, it is important to keep in mind when this story was written and what life was like during this time. Abraham lived some 4,000 years ago. He lived in a world where people believed in multiple gods. Some of those gods required people to do things we would think to be inappropriate or unethical. They tried to keep the gods from becoming angry at them. Abraham did not have the benefit of the Old or New Testament scriptures to help him understand God. So the request he believed God to be making to sacrifice his son may not have surprised him. He was prepared to obey whatever he felt God was asking him to do. However, Abraham was ready to stop and listen to God. When the angel spoke to him, telling him to stop and not to hurt the boy, Abraham listened. What is interesting here is how Abraham was able to adjust his understanding of God. In that moment, Abraham was prepared, or excuse me, Abraham was presented with new information about God and had to adjust his understanding of God. God was not asking for those things other gods were asking for. He saw God's love for us. This was a step forward for Abraham and his faith. To this day, Christians believe that God values human life. This is still a major way we grow spiritually. Like Abraham, we need to pause, listen, and turn to God. As we gain understanding, we learn more about what it means to be the body of Christ, the children of God. It is a growth process. Going back to the gospel message, we read a message of welcome, mainly that of those who will welcome the ones that Jesus is sending out. Before these verses, Jesus talks to his disciples about how he will send them out into the world. This is one of the first places we see Jesus talking to his disciples about discipleship and what it means to follow him. Some of it can sound a little harsh. There will be those who will not accept them. At one point, Jesus even tells his disciples he is sending them out like sheep among wolves. So they should be as shrewd as snakes but as innocent as doves. So how are we to take this? 
If we identify ourselves with the disciples, we may find ourselves feeling entitled to being welcomed by others, or maybe even a little righteous. But didn't Jesus say they are like sheep and told them to be as innocent as doves? Maybe then Jesus is telling his disciples they should act in such a way that others would want to welcome them. Do we think that our being Christian makes us more deserving of welcome? Would we knock on a person's door and tell them they should invite us in and feed us because we believe in Christ? I don't think this is what Jesus is saying. Perhaps you identify more with the hosts, welcoming others in. Shouldn't we as the body of Christ also be welcoming? Isn't this one of the hallmarks of our church, to be welcoming? Therefore, maybe the message here is that we should be welcoming and welcomable. It can be scary. Sometimes we may feel like aliens or like we do not fit in because we believe in Jesus' message. Some may not welcome us in spite of our efforts to be welcomable. But we are welcomed and accepted by God. And Jesus assures us some people will respond. They will be more likely to respond when they can see God at work in and through us. In the same regard, we need to think deeply about what it means to welcome one another. The Christian faith advocates compassionate welcome. Compassionate welcome means we need to approach each other through God. Authentic, genuine relationships form when we put God's love at the center of our relationships. Welcoming others may also require repentance. If we, in turning ourselves toward God, see that some of our behaviors do not welcome others, we need to turn away from those behavior patterns and turn towards acts that show us and our willingness to live in new ways of being found together in God. Just as with Abraham and the disciples, God is still revealing God's self to us today. When we turn to God as a community of believers, we can embody healing relationships and reflect God's love to others. We welcome each other in love. Love is not always met with love, yet we are called to love even in the midst of hate. When we pause, listen, and turn, choosing to follow Jesus, we become witnesses of God's love. Our spiritual imaginations are opened, turning, following the way of love or the way of Jesus does not mean that we need to change who we are. However, we may think differently. We may act differently. Though at times, maybe especially at this time, we can feel lonely. We are not on this journey alone. God is with us. And though we may be physically apart, we are still connected in and through God. So let us journey together in the way of love, turning to God, welcoming one another, and being bearers of Christ's love. Let us say together the Apostles' Creed on page 96. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty God, you have built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Grant us to be joined together in unity of spirit by their teaching, that we may be made a holy temple acceptable to you through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth, and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite you now to offer any intercessions or thanksgivings aloud or in the silence of your heart. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies, that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving of ourselves to your service, and by walking before you, holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us this world knowledge, in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore.